Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with another look at the features uh, that can be had with a Jack Aware MuseScore 4. So this is a branch, this is a pull request branch that is dealing with the uh, implementation of the Jack audio server in MuseScore 4. It is not available in the trunk, uh, master trunk of the application, but if you download this pull request, you can get these, this uh, capability that we're looking at. So right now I've got uh, Jack running and everything is running through Jack on the screen. You can see what I've got here is our door, which is my uh, digital audio workstation on Linux. I'm on Linux 24. Uh, this is uh, Ubuntu Studio 24.04. This is the newest, latest long-term service release. Just actually hit uh, the, um, came out of beta just a few days ago. So I've up upgraded my uh, project, uh, my uh, uh, workstations. I am in between projects. I actually just started the next project uh, after I upgraded everything. And I'm very pleased with the, this is one of the smoother um, upgrades for Ubuntu Studio that I can remember. Uh, this one is implementing Pipewire by default, which is good. That's a good place to be rather than having to configure it yourself. Uh, and I'm finding everything works really well. I did have to create a, uh, a switch here, which is something I was doing previously, so I can switch the sample rate from 44100 to 48,000. Um, and this is necessary in order to use the regular master trunk of MuseScore 4 because MuseScore 4 master only runs in 441. Uh, so whereas the Jack uh, pull request that we're looking right at right now runs in uh, 48, uh, there is a selector that's being developed to choose the sample rate inside of that and hopefully that will be integrated into the master trunk once those changes uh, are accepted by the development team sometime down the road. Uh, the uh, master, or rather the pull request is based on MuseScore 4.4. So it's actually two versions looking ahead and it's got some extra features that are being developed for 4.4 right now. Um, I have both installed and I've got a uh, I've got a selector for either one if I want to use the master or if I want to use the Jack version. I've been really doing all my work out of the Jack version because it's pretty pretty stable. I just pay attention whenever a new push comes out to make sure that it is uh, stable before I replace my current app images. But I've got our door open here and uh, I've got three instances of MuseScore open at the same time and each one is plugged into a separate audio bus in our door. And you can see here are my three projects. I've got one for strings I've got one for uh, keyed instruments and guitar, and then I've got one for woodwind quintet. So it's actually a string quartet with um, section strings also for a later part in the score where it opens up to a full ensemble. And then I've got a woodwind quintet. So you have oboe, clarinet, bassoon, horn, and flute. And then I have... Uh, this is just an example of what you can do with voice doubling. I've got piano, uh, but I also have above that another treble clef uh, piano instance. It's actually playing vibraphone parts. Um, and this is not necessarily playable. The stretches here on the hands are not playable by a single person. But I mean, if you were doing this for real, you'd have a couple of pianos. But it makes an interesting doubling to double the top, the treble end with that vibraphone sound. I have it mixed down a little bit. And then uh, also I have found for um, some of my scores, I'm using the classical guitar, nylon string classical guitar sounds, but I'm also doubling it with a harp and it's playing identically the same part. Uh, and I have the harp pulled down in the mix and it makes for a, a little bit more body a little bit more resonance. You don't really recognize that it's a doubled instrument as long as everything's panned to the same location. But these are interesting doubling tricks that you can do just right from the player. Much like what you would do in a digital audio workstation if you were doubling up different sampled sounds and mixing them together to generate something new. Of course you can just put a staff in there 
put staves in and assign a different sound to it and double double up your voices. But anyway, what I'm what I'm demonstrating here is something that I thought about a long time ago when this pull request started, but I was reminded of it by accident uh, last night when I was working on this score. This is a wall to wall um, uh, film score, five minute ish animation uh, and for this project the filmmaker wants the score written first uh, and then they're going to do some choreography with dancers and then from that cut choreography they'll do the animation they'll do match moving animation so uh, this requires that the music is actually written ahead that's kind of a, an oddity usually you get the uh, footage or you get the animation and then you score to it after some kind of picture lock uh, down the road you'll start to synchronize um, and that's really what I'm interested in the jack transport capability for is for that here though um, I want to show you something else what I did is I was uh, working on this project last night the full project and I made an edit and it, it started acting strange and I from experience, I knew I better save this real quick. So before I saved into the main project, I actually saved as a separate file because my fear was if it was acting funny and I saved while it was doing something strange, it might corrupt the file. So I saved it as an, as a, an added file, closed everything out, opened it back up, and I found that actually the main project file was fine. It had already saved and everything was okay. But I noticed that there were a few differences between the main project and the extra one that I saved. And I didn't realize it. I had both open. I was, on the dra I was in the jack pull request branch. And I hit play on one. And because it has jack transport, it actually was playing both files at the same time. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was hearing weird things going on in the score that weren't there. And then I realized, oh, in the background, I had this other file was playing at the same time as the one that I was working on. And uh, that reminded me to actually check this out. What I did is I took the project and I separated it into these three different subgroupings, three different stems, if you will. And then what I did is I uh, brought these three stems into our door, into three buses. And then uh, that goes out through the master to the um, sound card. And then inside of the three buses, I put some effects. I put a compressor for each one, and I put a reverb instance that's slightly different for each one. And then in the master, I placed another compressor, another reverb to, for a finish reverb for the whole thing, and then an equalizer, and then a little bit of a tape simulation for mechanical simulation and saturation. And I'm demonstrating here the fact that you could actually mix down live um, multiple MuseScore 4 projects and they will synchronize together because of the jack transport function. So everything is running through jack transport and uh, I'll just demonstrate this for you uh, real quick. Find a good place to start. We'll start right here.
Okay, so as you can see, perfect synchronization. I mean, theoretically, you could have in the Digital Audio Workstation additional MIDI tracks that are also synchronized, um, which is, you know, the idea that you can synchronize the picture and to MIDI tracks from Digital Audio Workstation and the Muse Score 4 Play Engine. But here I've got three instances of the Play Engine playing simultaneously, and they are coordinated through jack transport and I'm able then to treat each output as a different bus where I can add various mixing effects. Now I wouldn't do this for final render. What I would do is I would mix uh, from multiple instances and then render each instance to an audio file and then drop that audio file, that polished rendered audio file into the bus inside of the digital audio workstation for the final render. So that's probably how I would treat this. Uh, but it's, it, you know, just in theory, this works pretty well. If, if you really wanted to have m micro control over an array of various kinds of effects that are not necessarily available to you inside of MuseScore 4 at the time, um, you could do it uh, in synchronization through digital audio workstation. Plus, you could do all of this with synchronization to video as well, which is you know, the main point about this being used in film score. But I just wanted to demonstrate this, you know, real quick. A few things about the score. Um, you'll notice that this is not really polished notation because I don't care. No one's ever going to play this. This is all being done for the purpose of um, mock-up. And when you're doing mock-up in Muse Score 4, this is a, a an issue I've been pushing ever since this came out uh, now over a year ago. Um, is that you should treat the notation for mock-up as if it is a digital audio workstation and you're dealing in MIDI. That means that you will have a diversity of different note lengths and articulations in order to get the precise samples that you want and the precise sound that you want. So like right here, um, there's a moment right at the end of this uh, where you hear this, uh, it seems to slow down, I actually go to 9 and 8 here and I use syncopation to demonstrate a, uh, a, a slowdown, a retardando. Um, I wanted to have some discrepancy in the length that real players would do. And because it's playing from notation, it's playing extremely precise. It's playing very, even though it's using real samples and the AI that's driving it is selecting those samples based on some algorithms that demonstrate realism, it still is too perfect. So what I did is I have some notes on here that are slightly longer than other notes, and I have a mixture. Uh, so I have like the solo instruments. I'm, I have solo strings against section strings panned to slightly different locations to add another layer of realism. And the solo strings are holding over a little bit more than the section, so you can kind of hear that muddiness on the end of the release. It's still precise enough for professional playing, absolutely but it is only as precise as real professional players rather than as a computer. Uh, so you can hear what this sounds like. We'll start from here. So you can see how this how this is applied, right? You can you can really, really get quite particular with your uh, articulation choices and dynamics. You know, you put an oversaturate the piece with dynamic changes that will emulate the musicianship of a real person playing a real part. This might just be written as forte here on this horn part. Uh, but if, if you uh, place in specific dynamics, it will better emulate what a real person would do. Likewise, I see how I have notes cutting off earlier or late. So this is tied over to one extra beat, which you know, a real person may do that on that part. Uh, this is short by a beat, which a real person would take a breath between these two little phrases here. So you have to think about how a real player plays, particularly with the wind instruments, putting gaps in there to create breathing where breathing would be, even though this probably would not be notated like this. It would be a little cleaner like with one dynamic, and then um, this would be a dotted half note to fill out the measure. And there might be a breath mark or something put in there, uh, but here what I'm doing is I'm notating the actual humanity of the performance in places where I think that I need it. So 
Um, just a few ideas there about using MuseScore 4 uh, for realistic playback. It's already quite realistic. Uh, they've done an amazing job with the play engine, but just little nuanced things you can do in the notation for mock-up purposes, uh, assuming nobody's going to be reading these parts specifically. So very modular layout. I mean, I can lay everything out here and have a, a workflow for a project. Uh, and all I need to do is open up the different, you could have a session manager, but you could open up each one of the projects and uh, they should automatically connect in the patch bay the way they last were connected. If you save the, a, like an Acarla patch bay, if you save that um, session, it should do that automatically. If not, it's really no big deal to just plug things in uh, wherever you need to. I'm using Pat Chance here for my um, uh, session manager. Uh, so anyway, that's what I wanted to demonstrate. Just a few few little things that you might not have thought about that you can do with um, MuseScore 4 in this Jack transport uh, um, uh, pull request branch. I really hope that this gets cleaned up soon and, and this gets put in at least by version 4.4. .4. I know 4.3 will be coming out pretty soon. Um, and this is a little more forward thinking than that. So we're going to wait for at least another version. And I hope that things will be cleaned up by then and that the developers, the core developers, will be willing to integrate these uh, upgrades and updates into the into the master branch. And it'll be available for everybody. Um, I've had some questions uh, on the videos on the channel about how to do this in Mac. I really don't know. Jack is available cross-platform. It's available for Windows and Mac. But what you want to look at is how does your digital audio workstation, if you're on Mac, does Logic, will Logic use the Jack audio server? Um, if it does and it uses the transport function, well, then you're in business because uh, this branch will see that on your operating system. This branch is a cross-platform build. Uh, and the same on Windows, if you're using uh, Cubase or Reaper or something like that. And if, if those uh, digital audio workstations can use Jack, not just audio, but also the synchronization transport, then this will work for you as well. So it's all about knowing how to use Jack on the system that you're using. Obviously, it's very native to Linux. So, And with Pipewire being enabled on the Linux uh, distributions, it's quite seamless. Really, you just start anything and everything plugs into anything by default without adjusting a single setting. Everything just works. Uh, so anyway, uh, a little bit there for you to consider and some kind of really outside the box uses of this jack transport synchronization. I have found that if you're working a project and you're jumping around a lot, particularly while it's playing back, the synchronization will come out. It will fall and phase out. Uh, you need to make sure that you're starting from a point and then you start the transport uh, from that static point and then things will synchronize very well. There is also a very minor lag uh, in the play engine. It's uh, just milliseconds of time. Um, I've talked about on other videos how you can resolve that. I'm not going to get into it here, but it's a, a simple matter of putting an offset measure at the very beginning of the project, both in the uh, digital audio workstation and in the um, MuseScore files and then you start on measure two so you can look at those other videos where I discuss that and of course if this makes it to master trunk there'll be a lot more tutorials that I'll be making on this down the road so anyway good luck with this happy composing happy mixing <laughs>